Mauricio Pochettino has recently transformed his tactical philosophy at Chelsea. And this philosophy has been the deployment of a midfield three, contrary to his double pivot midfield that he's used remarkably at Spurs. So mid the midfield three was exemplified by Barcelona with Xavi, Busquets and Iniesta. But Mauricio Pochettino has invented his own midfield three at Chelsea with Caicedo, Enzo and Gallagher. And this has seen Chelsea get tremendous results against Fulham and Burnley. Will this be a new blueprint that Pochettino will implement at Chelsea? That is our discussion. Not forget to like, share and subscribe. So Pochettino deployed Enzo Fernandez, Kono Gallagher and Moises Caicedo as a midfield trio against Fulham and Burnley. In those games, Chelsea looked so in control in midfield. They dominated the play, created a lot of chances, and were easily able to maneuver the opponent. And the first thing we are going to analyze in this midfield three is how they behave in possession. So let's look at how a midfield three behaves in possession. So a midfield three consists of three central midfielders. The first central midfielder is the defender, the one tasked to sweep. The second one is the box-to-box -box midfielder, who is the controller, the one who dictates the tempo of the game and presages forward when need be, while the third one is the creator, the one who plays penetrative passes in the final third and joins the final third players in creating chances. So the midfield three is a quite dynamic midfield trio, forming triangles with each other. So the midfield three can either be in this form, where we have two defensive midfielders and one attacking midfielder. Or it can also be complemented with having one single holding midfielder and two attacking or center midfielders as we have seen with Manchester City and other teams. So let's look at how Chelsea deploy this midfield three. So during build-up, the opposition tried to press Chelsea high up the pitch. Caicedo being the deepest pivot is the one who starts to drop deep and receive the ball and play the ball to Enzo or Kono Gallagher. Caicedo is quite impressive in receiving the ball in these positions as he is quite press resistance. At times, he might drop in between the two fullbacks, uh, center backs, allowing the fullbacks to surge forward, and he can use his excellent long passing range to pick players in the wide areas or play the ball to Enzo Fernandez, who can now thread through balls with the runners making runs beyond him. The position of the three center, uh, central midfielders enables them to easily maneuver the ball against the midfield too, something that we have seen in recent matches at Chelsea, and we are going to see from a clip here how they do it. Gallagher receives the ball, plays the ball to Caicedo, who is able to play the ball forward. This midfield three is quite complementary of each other, enabling each and uh, all of them to be receiving the ball under pressure and always having two options on the ball. This might just be the deadlock to unlock Chelsea's season. Now, let's look at the team in more progressive phases of play. So Enzo might also drop deep in some instances, receive the ball, and Kono Gallagher being an extra midfielder can receive the ball in between the lines with the wingers playing in their natural position. One midfielder pushes forward to play alongside Jackson to give him uh, space and also to increase numerical advantages in the half spaces and in the channels. Kono Gallagher, to be precise, has been one aggressive midfielder in this situation, allowing even Palmer to be moving into the channel while he hugs the touchline. Alternatively, we've seen also Kukurela who played in these recent games and when Rich James comes back, he can occupy the right wing channel with Caicedo covering him and Konogalaga pushing forward to create overloads against opposition. This might see opposition teams shift towards the right and Enzo Fernandez, being the number eight can receive the ball, shift the play to Sterling who is quite lethal while attacking these spaces in the wide areas. The midfield 
trio of Caicedo, Gallagher and Enzo Fernandez might are also excellent on the ball with all of them being able to play long balls in the channels as well as through balls, improving Chelsea's strength and durability in midfield. The biggest strength of this midfield trio is seen out of possession, and we're going to see how. So out of possession, Chelsea are blessed with having one of the most youthful and energetic midfield. A midfield that consists of three excellent pressers of the ball and ball winners. Conor Gallagher this season has averaged the most tackles and interceptions for Chelsea playing in this midfield position. His ability to spring out from midfield rather than allowing the winger to push forward enables him to be the one pressing the midfielder, making Chelsea to win the ball high up the pitch as a result of teams going long. Caicedo's ability to be press resistant deeper is also a great advantage. So when the opponents are building against Chelsea and Chelsea are sitting in a mid block, Caicedo can win the ball, immediately play in a through ball to either Gallagher or Sterling, who can either play the ball to Sterling and immediately Chelsea launch counter attack, as we saw in the third goal against Burnley. You can see here how this team is quite hardworking. You can see how both three midfielders are excellent in covering spaces in the channels, denying the opposition from accessing channels of space and bare faces of play. Also, the narrow position of this midfield three is dragging oppositions towards the center, creating a lot of gaps in the wide areas where you find Chelsea wingers and fullbacks are constantly receiving the ball under little or no pressure. The ability to win the ball back in midfield and immediately launch quick counter-attacks is devastating. The strength of Enzo Fernandez and Caicedo, together with the chemistry they have created by being excellent passers of the ball, enables them to easily and quickly progress the ball from defense to attack. Having these two young press-resistant midfielders at the base of midfield not only gives Pochettino an excellent strength in controlling the middle pack of the pitch, but also enables him to have strength to dominate his opponents. And this is a strength that Pochettino will not hesitate to hold on for a very long time. We like to see how Pochettino uses and deploys this midfield against more pressing and stronger teams in the Premier League, especially ahead of their next tough fixtures in the Premier League. If you've enjoyed this video, do not forget to like, share and subscribe. Thanks.